Hi, hi. I'm going to flip this over so I can kind of monitor myself. My name is Ellis Bourbonnet, YouTube. Yeah, right. And this, I'm here to talk about the 700R4 transmission. Um, we had just, we have the 72 El Camino and we had just uh, repowered it. We took off the whole front end, painted everything, kind of redid everything, and of course, put a new motor in there, kind of semi-high pro uh, street uh, Chevy 350, and then we thought, well, hey, we want to try a 700 R4 transmission. Well, 700 R4s, are, they're the four-speed. Uh, originally, it had the, the 350 three-speed in it, which, you know, Chevy relied on those for a billion years. They, they made like 20 million or more of the uh, Turbomatic 350s, 400s, uh, etc. Um, so we, we thought we'd go to the 700 R4 uh, conversion. Now there's a lot of stuff you got to do to it. You, you got to set your, you got to cut your drive shaft for one thing. It's three inches longer. You have to move your member back. Um, 700 R4 has a lock-up torque converter, so you can either, you know, put a, a ball bearing in your snout or in the snout of your solenoid. They have a little thing they call snout, or you can um, get a electrical lock-up button. Or they even have valves. There's just there's a tons of stuff online uh, that you could do to your valve body and things. The 700 R4 is very different from the 350 in that it runs off fluid pressure. It has what's called a TV valve cable. It's not a kick down cable like the other vacuum, you know, like your C4s and your 350s. Um, it's actually a, hooked up to your throttle, but it's the um, transmission fluid pressure. And this thing has to be just dialed in correctly for this to work. Uh, b because if not, you won't have enough pressure to engage your clutch. It's quite that simple. And it's, it's been a problem dialing it in on the 3-4 uh, clutch pack is what these things are notorious for having problems with. The 700 R4, this is probably like an 8, 1984 that we have in the car. It was, uh, they're originally built from about 82 to the late 90s and then they morphed into the uh, 700, or the, the 4L60 and the 4L60E which means electronic and computer control. This is one of the very early manual ones, so it's, you don't need a computer or any of that stuff to do it. It was a little bit more hot rodable. But these things are notorious for if you do not get the clutches, I mean that TV valve lined up right, and if you do not have the proper clutch pack upgrade in the 3-4 section, they'll never, it never gets enough pressure or enough oomph to compress your clutch pack to turn your your the kind drive shaft, and then you burn up the three four, and then you're all mad, and you have to pull the transmission out and this and that. I, I didn't do that. Uh, I kind of found out about it later. All this stuff it's online. There's so many forums about this, and actually Alto Red Eagle clutches they build a special P pack power pack uh, for. The 700 R4, you know, 3/4 input drum, and Sonics, which is all upgrade, high dollar uh, upgrade in transmission parts. They build a lot of aftermarkets. They build it's very pricey, but they build a an input drum that you put that 3/4 clutch pack in it, and brada, you be gripping. But uh, uh, they also build valves that go in the 700R4 valve body for helping uh, manual lockups and different things and they build uh, blah, 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 blah. what's that thing in the side the servo or they build a custom accumulator things and yeah the I don't know if you call it a servo or something 
that engages the band. I call it accumulator. Maybe they do call it, I forget, I'm transmission dead right now. But anyways, we put, we went through this and in the end I decided all this is way too technical and it's pretty expensive. And you know, I'm just gonna go back. I, it's a four speed, but I could, without cutting a hole in the bottom of my car, in the thing and putting a floor shifter in, um, I could never use first and second. And you know, the, the premise is to get four speed on the freeway and you just put the car in drive and you really don't have any intention of going, of ever using any of the separate gears on the, the vehicle. You, you know, if you keep it a column shift, you know, and then you just kind of sequence always through the drive, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, you know. And, you know, in the end, I, I says, you know, I, after dialing in this TV valve and having seen all these weak links in it, I says, you know, I'm just going to go back to the 350. We had our original 350 was sitting right there, and I, I rebuilt it, and I'm going to put it back in. So, we're going to offer the 700 R4 up for sale, but uh, you know, there's a lot of information. I just would not give it to somebody unless they knew specifically, you know, a, a lot about it. And we're not selling it cheap either. I, I think we've got 1,300 into it. We bought the carcass for I don't know for a couple hundred bucks, and then completely went through it. I bought all the upgrading parts we did. It's all Alto Red Eagle clutches and Colleen Steels. We bought the Beast Sun Shell for it. And we didn't redo the planetaries, I guess, because now they're all up from four speed planetary versus five speed. The older original equipment in the transmission is better than some of the new crap that's coming out of wherever it comes from, Asia. You know, their steel just isn't, they don't have that quality and that, uh, you know, pride in their, in making good steel. <laughs> they make, yeah, sorry. Um, but anyways, uh, so we're offering up the 700R4, so I thought I'd do a little bit of an information uh, on it. And uh, I'll start it up. I bought this gauge. To, um, to help dial it in, it's a uh, it's on a six foot hose that actually goes down and goes to the inside of of the tranny. Uh, it's a pressure gauge, and if I ever hook this up, if if anyone gets in, it's going to put it in a custom a Chevelle or whatever they want to do, Camaro. Uh, I would highly recommend putting this is a pressure gauge to your actual pressure. The 350s all, and the 400s, the Turbomatics, they all ran off vacuum. You know, and they're real simple. The valve body's totally simple. They're very utilitarian. And, but this runs, it shifts all the gears off its fluid pressure. Um, I, I'm gonna pop the hood and you'll see on the carburetor on the bottom, it looks like a kick down cable. But it's not. It's it actually goes to your pressure valve. It's called a TV valve, throttle valve, and it slides back and forth to. And you've got to have this thing lined up. I, I have a bunch of information on it, but for its idle section, it needs to be at this specific psi for like a ground zero, and that's why I bought this uh, pump. You know, because I, I was trying to dial it in. I custom did a bracket. I custom did a lot of stuff. And in the end, you know, I was, you know, like, I'm just going to go back to the simple three speed. And I, we're planning on redoing the rear end of this. And if I feel like I need any more um, high end gears, uh, I'll do it in the pinion and ring gear on the rear end. And so, yeah, we had to cut the drive shaft. I'm not selling that unless you want it, unless you're doing a Chevelle or something, a Chevelle or an El Camino like this, and then yeah, it's a the whole package. Um, with a 383, that'd be nice. Um, 
but yeah, it, it cost a bunch. So for me to rechange my mind, I had to order a new drive shaft, get a new custom torque converter to build. This one has a, a really nice custom torque converter. Justin of uh, Kalakaua Torque Converters here in, in Honolulu built it. He's a very high performance oriented guy. He's very, he told me, he says, you can stand on this thing all day long. It's, it'll last you 20 years. So he kind of builds them heavy duty because he knows what, you know, people in a car like this or in something, you know, the bracket, they might want to start getting heavy. He says you could use nitrous with this if you wanted. But anyways, um, I'm going to start it up. Let's do that. Here we go. Um. That was a rough start. Sometimes I flood it. I want a new car. I need a new carburetor. I kind of stripped down that L Brock. And I should have left some of the stuff on it. And it's a very old Edelbrock. Uh, I need, I'd like to get the, the other one, the Thunder or whatever it is. This one's a Performer, so it's, it's kind of light. Uh, we built this, it's, it's pretty much of an Edelbrock motor. So here's the gauge right here. I'm not selling the gauge with it. I'm keeping my gauges. But we got these for, for pretty cheap. I mean, 50 bucks. But you, you actually need this for an installation. And if anyone was doing this, I would highly recommend, uh, you know, getting... It's a, it's a pressure, fluid pressure gauge. Now, this is your linkage right here. Let me see if I can get in here. And... Uh, Oops, sorry. <sighs> Damn it. I'm oh, sorry. But you see right here, that is the cable that goes to your throttle cable. And you see there's tension on it, but we set the minimum tension with that pressure gauge. As you move it, if you take it slack, the pressure will drop, and you get it to where idling it's at the best pressure. And then technically, that spring they make all kinds of little custom things for it now uh, my girlfriend Colleen was kind of amazed that she goes well why didn't they do this just to begin with <laughs> you know and that's the way it is kind of with custom cars you know so this was just we went with the Edelbrock look and got some headers and you know just the basic stuff uh, got a uh, what do you call it MSD 
street gig thing over there. I I bought a, a, a Will Wood, but I ended up going back to this. And but I do like that. I like our little fan. And you got to pull the fan, you know, a couple inches out of that, or it will not move air. This thing really moves air. Had a nice custom bracket here. This right here. Uh, quarter inch stainless plate that a friend manufactured because the original stuff um, went to the exhaust manifolds you know it bolts on to the exhaust manifold so he built that for my power steering pump so rather than spending all the money for the new pumps I rebuilt the power steering pump and I rebuilt this gig right here you know with the with the two colored kind of balls you know, a ball bearings and a worm gear. We, we totally redid that. It's still a crappy old power steering, but yeah, whatever. Um, you know, it has a custom radiator. It needs a new hose, but it has the, the Summit radiator and, and whatnot. And we actually wired it. Probably can't see it, but we wired it with a... Uh, one of those... Whew, I forget. It's not auto wire and it's not painless. It was something else. And it was a hot rod set. So we were able to put in all new wiring. And that's kind of the, that's kind of our rig right there. And it's got the 700 R4 hooked up. And it's to, hooked up to the stock linkage. Um, you can see the inside stock. We pretty much just like to leave it stock I don't, I don't want to put something there my girlfriend like sitting next to me and it's just a the old I, this is what I was kind of raised with Southern California Riverside um, what's nice though is we were able to take out the clock which I like a clock but and stick in the RPM gauge here so it's not invasive you know and we're, we're just leaving it like this I ain't gonna put no hot rod and three on the tree and yeah Hi, that's my, that's the boss, Bill. And okay, so oh, while we're looking, this is you know this is a motorcycle stand. We got a Harley and a couple bikes, but there is the 350 transmission that we're going to put back in it with the new drive shaft and new pan, and down under there in that tire rim is the new torque converter. Um, so all that stuff, um, hmm. be interesting to see how this comes out because I'm getting a really bad picture right here. So, wow, I'm not sure what's going on with the camera on that. I put it on daylight, seems to want to work in here that's reflections huh well okay um, so we're gonna put this up this the 700 r4 we're gonna put it up for sale It'll probably be around something like 1300 or something like that and uh, you know we have a bunch into it you know so uh, it'll probably be about 13 or, or around there. I hate to quote a price now because we bought the oil pan was a couple hundred bucks for it. I forget, it might have been 300. It's a Durali super cooler. Uh, it's a deep dish pan, but it, it uses a stock filter because it has turbulators on the bottom. We're going to do another video when I get it out. I'm ready to pull the car and now stick it up, stick it in here in the garage and. I am going to take out that transmission. You know, we have other, I, I've got two other small block Chevy V8s. So, you know, we're, we're not a, dis, this isn't a distressed sale or anything, but I thought it'd be a while for I'm working on another one or whatever. I thought we'd try and just go ahead and offer it up and just in case there's somebody out there that might want one. Okay, well, thanks a lot, and uh, adios.